I love Biore pore strips because I love to see what's coming out of my nose. Amanda Stenberg's guys to box braids, smoky eyes, and TikTok brows. I don't exactly know what that is, but we are going to react to her skincare and maybe some of her makeup routine today. Take down my hair for the full look. For those who don't know or are new here, hello, my name is Cassandra Bankson. I've been an expert. I'm in the industry for over 10 years, and I've personally suffered with acne for over 15. So skincare is both my obsession and also my work. I'm a medical esthetician, and although I've worked alongside and with doctors and dermatologists, I am not a physician myself. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from other people's skincare routines. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hi y'all, uh, my name is Amanda Sundberg and today I'm gonna be showing you how I do my box braids. I learned how to do it in quarantine. I never did this before, but here we go. Also, I'm gonna show you my skincare routine and also uh, just do like a basic makeup look. I don't know who she is, but her skin is like my latest obsession. She is glowing, so whatever she's doing, it is working for her. Never heard of her before, but now I'm gonna have to do some Googling. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is plunge my face into the chilling depths of this bowl. <laughs> so the ice water is commonly used to close pores, which technically does not happen. If you are using ice directly on your skin, that is a big no-no because it can cause problems, specifically in the nerves, the trigeminal nerve that comes right here. You don't want the ice to trigger or numb anything there. When you are putting your face into a bowl of cold water and ice, uh, it could give you like a headache, but it's not the worst thing to do. Just remember that technically your pores do not open and close. There's an erector pili muscle, which makes you have goosebumps, but technically there's nothing that opens or closes those. So thermodynamics is how some people attempt to do that. She's probably using it to depuff the skin. Maybe she just woke up. Maybe she's a stomach sleeper, but she does it and it's not the worst thing in the world. I am very basic with my skincare. I pretty much only use CeraVe. Use this one in particular. Hydrating facial cleanser. Ah, uh, yes, the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. This is something that Dr. Dre almost made me buy, and even Hiram almost made me buy, but I cannot confirm whether or not they're cruelty-free. This is a very, very basic product. Again, it's basically glycerin and then uh, some ceramides. So it is a cleanser, but it's supposed to hydrate and calm the skin. It's a humectant, glycerin is, so it draws in moisture. If it gets the job done, I'm happy. It's like 10 bucks for a huge bottle, if I am correct. So I know that it's affordable. One of the dermatologists that I've worked with highly recommends them. However, I want to put my money where my morals are and I cannot find out whether or not they're cruelty free because I get conflicting information. So if you can help, I would be greatly appreciative. Something that I use like every other day or so or whenever I just feel like I need it um, is like an exfoliating pad. They look like this. Gets rid of any buildup or gunk. Oh, so this is strange. I originally thought she was going to whip out like a pad, like an actual product exfoliant, but this is just a physical pad. In order to dig into this, we have to know that there are two main types of exfoliation. There is physical exfoliation and chemical exfoliation. Physical is what she's doing, physically exfoliating the skin. Again, with an abrasive towel like this, with a loofah or a sponge, or even with a walnut scrub or something more gentle, such as a rice or jojoba bead scrub. Now, chemical is using acids or enzymes or any of these molecules that actually eat up and break apart the dead skin. I like chemical exfoliants better. They are more gentle, they do penetrate deeper, and they exfoliate more evenly because they exfoliate anywhere that you put them. When you are using a mechanical exfoliant, such as what she's doing, you have to make sure that you're rubbing each area enough, and most of the time we don't pay an even amount of attention to the different areas of our face that we're exfoliating. So I don't particularly like this. I also assume that she's washing this after every use. I would prefer that she puts something on it, so again, she could maybe use a lactic acid or something like that along with this exfoliating pad hand puppet thingy. <laughs> um, but overall, I would love to see, especially for her skin type, which is maybe Fitzpatrick type four, maybe type five, but she also has absolutely glowing skin. So it's obviously working for her. I don't know if it's the camera or just her genetics, but she's doing something right. <laughs> I like to exfoliate my lips, it makes them really soft. And that was my cat meowing in the background. She has a kitty too! Oh my god, you can't just tell us that you have a cat in the vicinity and not pick it up and show it off to us. Come on, Amandala, come on! I love Biore pore strips because I love to see what's coming out of my nose. 
A lot of people love these, and I'll be honest, it is very fun to see things coming out of your nose. These strips are not my favorite. Again, they are not cruelty-free. They can be very damaging to the skin. I have seen people who have actually come into a dermatology clinic to get help because they use these. They didn't pull them against the skin like you're supposed to. They ripped out, and therefore they lifted the top layers of their skin off and actually had a minor avulsion. Basically, they created a bloody skin flap, and they came to the dermatologist's office. After they had gone to the ER, they had sewn it back up, and now they were trying to deal with some of the scarring. This person was on Accutane, so their skin should not have been exfoliated in the first place, but it's important to remember that these are powerful things and should be done with care, so like know what you're doing. These are not my favorite to get blackheads or little dots out of the skin. Those vacuum pore machines, those could work better. One of my favorite tools to use in the medical aesthetic office is a skin spatula or a skin scrubber. Again, you want one that is ultrasound and ultrasonic. They are expensive, they are hard to come by, and the ones that we use are professional grade only, but that is what I would personally recommend instead of one of these. And also, again, just going back to those acids, it's not as satisfying as ripping something off and seeing all of these sebaceous filaments and the blackheads sticking up out of there. I know it is fun. Trust me, I'm with you on this, Amandala. However, what's better for your skin would be something like a lactic acid or a glycolic acid. And then you could follow up with an antioxidant serum so that the little open blackheads don't turn black again, because the reason a blackhead turns black is because it's exposed to oxygen. So I hope that she's going to show us a close-up. I do want to see a close-up. So I will continue on my basic journey. You can't just do that and not share the results with us. <laughs> Which includes CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. So again, this product is very popular. Again, it's very basic. All it really is is, again, glycerin. This one happens to have caprylic triglyceride, which is a derivative from coconut, and ceramides. And these are honestly ingredients that you see in many, many basic moisturizers. The difference is that CeraVe is able to do this at a very affordable price, and they don't add anything special in there. Um, again, because I cannot look into the ethics of the brand, and they're kind of secretive with what they share. Um, if someone can help me find out if they're cruelty-free only in Europe, or if they're cruelty-free here, or if they sell in China, or not, that would be so helpful, but it's frustrating to me. So in the meantime, I have found other ceramide creams that I can recommend. One that I was introduced to maybe in the last three months or so has been Purito. It is the Derma Sleeping Pack. That one is excellent. It actually has some extracts that are really good, such as Centella Asiatica or Tiger Grass, which can be anti-inflammatory to the skin. That actually has a high amount of ceramides, as well as other beneficial ingredients that will actually sit on the skin, lock in moisture, hydrate the skin, and then impart some of these benefits. So I would personally recommend that over the CeraVe for multiple reasons, but again, I understand why the derm recommends it, I understand why people love it, it's affordable, and again, her skin looks flippin' amazing. Like, I would have thought she's already wearing makeup. So that's my skincare routine. It is very basic. This gray like, center of, and then I just like follow the parts out to the rest of the head. This is art. This takes like technique and skill. I have never seen this actual process be done. And I am flabbergasted in a wonderful way. Around my strand of hair, around this point. I can talk to you about hair loss. I can talk to you about the three stages of hair growth. I can talk to you about hair growth factors. However, when it comes to hair styling, obviously, I know nothing. So this is really interesting for me to see, and it's literally like she's creating like a pattern, like a spider web, like a star in her hair. I'm gonna tie off my braids with rubber bands. Okay, I was feeling kind of salty earlier when I was parting my hair because it's getting that tired, but now that I see it coming to fruition, I'm happy. <laughs> it took a million hours, uh, but here we are. Proud as hell of these parts. Um, fill in the ombre. Sometimes I'll use two colors. Not everybody likes to look like a glazed donut, but that's my vibe. Just did that thing that everyone's doing now, where I shaved off the ends of my eyebrows. And the inside. <laughs> But sunscreen! She went through her skincare, her hair, and her makeup, and not a single product had sunscreen. Amandala, sunscreen needs to be used every single day. <laughs> Sunscreen is the most important piece of a morning routine. And again, this isn't just about wrinkles or graceful aging. We're literally talking about cancer. Basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. These are caused directly by UV radiation that comes from the sun, and they are cumulative, which means if you get a sunburn when you're four years old and another one when you're 12 and another one when you're 22, that all builds up over time, and your skin can have DNA damage, lasting damage because of that. And
And again, I don't know her heritage, culture, or ethnicity. However, based on her skin tone, she looks like she could be a three, four, or five on the Fitzpatrick scale. A lot of people who are African American, black, or Jamaican are told that they don't need to use sunscreen because of the melanin in their skin. And while it is true, melanin, the pigment that gives our skin color, is meant to protect against the sun, every single person, regardless of their skin color, still needs to use sunscreen because skin cancers can still happen. One of the biggest myths is that if you have black or dark skin, is that you can't get skin cancer. You can. There are also specific types that are a little bit more common, such as actinic keratosis. This can turn into squamous cell skin cancer, and it appears to be, unfortunately, more common in those who do have darker skin. So again, even though melanin is built to protect our skin cells from the sun, the melanin pigment literally sits on top of our skin cells like an umbrella to protect us. That's why if you're a two or a three on the Fitzpatrick scale, when you go into the sun, you tan. That is your skin saying, hey, we're being damaged, put up protection. But even for the people who have the blackest of skin and their melanin is being super protective of their skin cells, it does not make you immune. And regardless of who you are or where you're from, if you're a human and if you have skin, you need to be wearing a sunscreen every damn day. <laughs> I tried to film a video in 2018 or 2019 on sunscreens for different skin types and I was struggling to find a sunscreen for people who have darker skin that does not flash back. Because one of the hardest things about sunscreen is if it makes you look pastier, if it makes you look gray. Um, the one that I recommended back then has a tint in it. It still works, but literally in the past three months alone, I found about Black Girl Sunscreen. It is vegan, cruelty-free, reef safe. Mine is back ordered, so it's still in the mail. I haven't tested it yet. And again, my skin color is not the one that major makeup and skincare companies haven't catered to for years. So my needs aren't really the ones that matter here. However, I'm excited to get it so that I can try it out. And at this time, these are the sunscreen brands I would recommend for people who have darker skin or for people who are frustrated with the flashback. Turn that like button as blue as the bottom of her braids, and if that subscribe button is still red, be sure to tickle it until it turns gray. If you enjoyed this video, there's another reaction video here that you'll probably like, and overall, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.